All right, the New York Rangers end up falling to the Tampa Bay Lightning 4-1. to one. The Bolts, Andre Palat, Nikita Kucherov, Andre Vasilevsky, Steven Stamkos, Zach Bogosian, and Pat Maroon end up showing up massively for the Bolts in this one. And I got to tell you, even though the shot count was close, it felt like the New York Rangers were skating in sand. And I told you at the end of game one, I loved what the Rangers were doing, but I also said, I've been on this ride. I've got the t-shirt. I've seen the movie before. The Leafs and the Bolts. The Leafs handled the Bolts in game one. The Bolts end up coming back. And now what do we have? We have a three-game series. The Bolts haven't lost the lead since 944 of Game 3. Andre Vasilevsky has found his groove. However, the New York Rangers are known to be dominant at home. Igor Shosturkin is dominant at home. This is a three-game series now, and in that three-game series, two of those games will be played in MSG, which should provide a much-needed bump to the Rangers. So let's go ahead. Let's talk about this game. Let's talk about the series as we're coming forward. Let's talk about it. This game wasn't as much about the Bolts just being dominant as much as it was also about the New York Rangers skating in sand, to be fair. And I'm not here to beat up the Rangers. Look, we know they started the game without Ryan Strom. That's tough when your number two center doesn't end up making the lineup due to warmups. Not even due to warmups, but during warmups. It's late. You get what I'm saying. And he ends up getting pulled. That can be a mess for your team. That can be a mess for Gallant to have to deal with. So even though Point has been out for the the Tampa Bay Lightning for quite some time and they've dealt with their own injury issues everybody does in the playoffs the playoffs is more like a battle of attrition and who's healthier sometimes than it is who's more skilled Ryan Strom coming out minutes before the game ends up throwing New York through a loop especially when you're the visiting team yes you have depth yes you have good players yes you have the kid line but unfortunately two things have happened one I haven't seen the kid line in two games they've disappeared maybe they'll come back where are you guys because the New York Ranger fans would really like to see you and number two it is hard to replace and create new lines minutes before for a game teams have to have the resolve in order to do it but this isn't the miracle on ice this is reality and in reality humans don't love change the only one that loves change is a wet baby and this ends up throwing the New York Rangers through a bit of a loop before game time also the fact is that the Tampa Bay Lightning moved the puck so beautifully today however how could they not the New York Rangers and I'm going to show you it in the goals as we get to the back half of the video like we always do the New York Rangers were stuck skating in sand there was also a really good fight I mean you could see it why because, well, I mean, if you're stuck, you're not moving. Vetrano decides, hey, I'm going to give my team a big uplift here. He's going to go at it with Brandon Hagel. This was more of an old school thing. Hagel finds Vetrano. Vetrano goes, all right, let's do it. Both guys, a little bit chirpy. We'll show you the little bit of the lead up leading to it. And I want to talk about the referee and the linesman near the back half there. But it was a pretty good fight. It was a pretty good go by both teams. That is what you want to see in the playoffs. Neither guy hurt. One guy trying to spark his team. But unfortunately, the spark went the other way because about a minute in after that it was the Tampa Bay Lightning that ended up capitalizing on the momentum from that scrap in this game as well the New York Rangers Corsi and we've been talking about it since the playoffs started is actually quite strong they end up winning in the shot category as well too but that's not why this game looked lopsided the game looked lopsided because of these high danger chances 13 to 6 Ranger fans could feel it I could feel it if you're watching this game you could see it and it's just very simple fact at this point in time that you know when you're seeing high danger chances, even if you're not counting them, you know what team has control of the puck. And I think you could feel it through this entire game. And those high danger chances simply came because the New York Rangers were skating in sand. So they generated a lot of shots. They didn't give much help to Igor Sesterkin. Bogosian and Pat Maroon look like first line players rewind a couple years into their career. And that's all she wrote. Palat, the UFA, the guy who is there own rental you always got to love that term right guys played for a team for his entire career he's a ufa you don't end up trading him at the deadline so now he's your own rental whatever it's kind of a cute term in terms of hockey but palat was on fire this game three points for palat yan ruda and the depth of the defensemen on the new york rangers the new york rangers boy it is late for me 
the Tampa Bay Lightning continues to show. So guys like Ruta, guys like Cernak end up picking it up. And you got to love it. You That's exactly what you want to see. We talk about Sergachev, McDonough, and Hedman all the time, especially Hedman. I mean, Kale McCarr is doing greatness over there in the West. Adam Fox is one of the best defensemen in the NHL. But really, this is Hedman's blue line until it's not Hedman's blue line. McCarr is turning into a young Bobby Orr. But the former Norris Trophy winner in Victor Hedman is not going to go quietly into the night, as they say. And it's the same with Andre Vasilevsky. Maybe Igor Shosturkin is the new next big thing in the NHL, but Vasilevsky is only 27. Hedman is not over the hill yet either. And both of these guys are not going to give up their top nominations at the position lightly. So Vasilevsky on fire right now. And when Vasilevsky heats up, he is very, very dangerous. So even though Shosturkin is incredible at home and they will have the home ice advantage, we got to look to see what Andre Vasilevsky is going to do. And really, if history is any predictor of the future, we know he's going to stand on his head because that is what Vassy does when he ends up heating up. And I think Vassy is now heating up. Speaking of heating up, you guys have been heating up. We have 7,000 new subscribers since starting in the playoffs. Wow. Give your guys a golf clap. We are on the way to 10,000. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button. What are you waiting for? Why don't you go ahead, give Coach Ryan D a quick little thumbs up there to help share the video and comment down below. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know about any of the points. And you know what? If you can't think of a comment, Go ahead and just drop an emoji for me. That goes ahead and helps share the video. Any engagement is great engagement. And all you HGS fans and Coach Ryan D fans have been absolutely fantastic. If you want to go ahead and level up your fan experience, think about joining our members page. There's a join button on this video or on our homepage. It just is join. You can go ahead, select any tier you want. And we'll give a big shout out to all these amazing coaches staff members here. We just had Ash, who is a massive Ranger fan, join us in the lower bowl. So we are growing like crazy. Thank you so much to our executive suite members. Thank you so much to our lower bowl members. We love having you here. And hey, if you're not a member and you're not looking for ways to support the channel monthly, there is a super thanks button down below. A little bit of line four on line four here. This ends up being the Pat Maroon goal with Zach Bogosian. Take a look at this. You have one, two, three New York Rangers all in fine position here in the neutral zone. But the unfortunate part about this is, is that they all just decide to back up. This is what I mean by their skating and sand. So take a look at the three New York Rangers there. Beautiful stretch pass there. They end up freezing it. Okay, so one guy ends up driving the lane. Big deal. Why do you have one, two, three? three and this guy who is already gapped up behind the blue line why is everybody so far back there is only one tampa bay lightning here right now and it doesn't make any sense so what ends up happening they continue carrying through this is absolutely terrible gap by the rangers and they end up finding zach bogosian of all players here look they're running 11 forwards they're running seven defensemen they want to get bogosian in the lineup but take a look at these moves he walks around a new york rangers team that is just standing still ryan reeves barely contests them. Everybody is looking at the puck. What are you doing? Look at the body. This is crazy. Look, looking at the puck, looking at the puck, looking at the puck. It doesn't make any sense to me at this point in time. Like they're just lost. He ends up putting a quick shot on net and take a look as well. Four New York Rangers continuing to look at the puck. Just, I don't know what to say. It's a great job by the Tampa Bay Lightning, but they were really handed a free gift. Take a look there. Pat Maroon gets to walk in uncontested. And again, look at the eyes of the New York Rangers. No one is touching him. He just gets to put a goal in and everybody's going, oh my God, what just happened? And frankly, what just happened is Mr. Three Cups in a Row looking for his fourth just scored and nobody was moving. Hagel and Vitrano with 837 left decide to have a little bit of a gentlemanly conversation here. I don't end up showing a ton of fights on this channel and I'm not going to show the fight, but take a look at something here. I mean, one thing I want to point out is watch the linesman. Look at him come in there. I don't know if you just saw it there. It's it's tough to kind of get the angle on it, but you can see him here. He is coming in a million miles an hour into this fight and, and go ahead, take a look at what they end up doing because I got a point to make on this one. As Hagel and Vetrano end up talking to each other, you can almost read it. They're like, do you want to go? Do you want to go? Maybe I want to go. And now 
how they're going. You can see the linesman does an excellent job of getting in there super quick, and this is really new. So linesmen entering into fights so quick is something that is just transitioned quietly in the NHL. We've talked about this many times before in the sense that the NHL is one foot in and one foot out. It doesn't know what it wants to be. It's always a confused child. It just got passed by soccer as the most popular team sport in North America. So now soccer is number four, if you can believe it, and that is watching English soccer. Hockey is down to number five, and I think it's because hockey doesn't know what it wants to be. They want fights, but they don't want to show them on TV. They kind of cut back in and cut back out. They want fights, but the linesman is jumping in immediately. Normally, what used to happen in fights is linesmen would let two guys who said, okay, we want to go. That was an agreed upon fight between both guys. He'd let them fight, and he would be there to step in as soon as it was done to make sure nobody was further injured in the fight or some guy just didn't end up on top of a guy continuing to hit him. But all I've seen in this playoffs and quietly over the last couple of years in the NHL is linesmen jumping in there immediately. We've seen him in scrums. We've seen him in one-on-ones. I can't believe the linesmen aren't accidentally getting popped on this one because like these are big men they're heated they've got emotions but linesmen are trying to stop fights before they happen as opposed to letting them go and jumping in if you're a linesman let me know what's changed down below because it feels like the marching orders have changed and you know what players they love linesmen fans if you didn't know this the linesman's the most popular guy on the ice that isn't wearing your jersey they talk to the players they tell the players when to calm down they give the players tips on games linesmen are extremely popular players and they're very important because they keep you safe on the ice they don't just call off sides they are the ones that are getting in there when you're chucking it's not the referees nobody likes the referees the referees like the referees but nobody else likes the referees because no one likes the police officer if you want to call them that on there they have to hand out fines and penalties to everybody else so you always want a referee until you don't but linesman uber uber popular i gotta give him a lot of credit for getting in there and keeping the players safe but i just wish the nhl would decide what it wants do you want to be a scoring league and you want to move into the new format or do you want to be a league that's marred in injuries and fights and tradition and grind them up hockey and players dropping like flies i don't really know which one it wants to be I'm good with both because I'm of the generation that has been through both. I've watched the transition to the speed. I love it. I love watching the McCars, the McKinnons, the McDavid's. I'm a big fan. I also love watching the grind them out, beat them up hockey of the Detroit Red Wings and Colorado Avalanche in the late 90s, early 2000s. Both are good, but we're in this weird hybrid spot where even after 30 years in this game, I'm starting to question certain things that I don't understand, like offside. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought that was a that was a funny joke if I know you're in the East, but if you were watching the West, there was an offside and it wasn't offside and I, I still don't understand it. But hey, here we are. Linesman Rock and uh, you let me know down below. Goal number two, the Rangers. Puck is right here. They end up throwing it up the middle of the ice. Never throw pucks up the middle of the ice. This is an absolutely terrible play. Look, it works out because... It doesn't get picked off at the blue line, so there's no big deal there. But as the puck ends up going up the ice, what do you end up seeing? It just goes right to the stick here of Jan Ruda. And as it goes over here to Jan Ruda, take a look at Andre Palat because he's going to be the second player here to make a play on it. So New York has puck possession. They give up puck possession. Ruda bumps it over here to Palat. Take a look at what Palat does here. He just, just silky. Like Andrew Kopp skates by him and goes like, yeah, whatever. He might have been able to blow him up there. I mean, the puck was on his stick. That would have been a well-timed hit. I mean, good thing he didn't for Palat's own sake at that point. But Palat ends up playing with this puck. And what you're going to end up seeing is Nikita Kucherov and the rest of the Lightnings cutting up the ice hard in order to get that breakaway. But this is Palat. Take a look at the shoulder check. Watch his head right now. He knows he's looking for Cooch. It's left brain, right brain. They play on the same line. They've played on the same team forever. Watch the little shoulder check. Look, there's my buddy. There he is. I know he's there. So he can see him out of his peripherals. He knows what he's looking for. This is a high-skilled player in Palat. He ends up finding Kucherov up the ice, slashing it right up the middle and this is a problem here by New York as well, too. So look, we talk about the dots. We talk about defending inside the dots. Well, we have two defensemen that are basically on the dots, not covering the middle. We also have two defensemen that are poorly gapped. They can't go offside. I don't know why somebody isn't back here supporting the middle of the ice. Andrew Kopp ends up coming backwards in order to support it, but no one's going to catch Kucherov at this point. So a give up up the middle. Jan Ruta throws it up. High skill by Palat. Quick shoulder check to find Kuch. They're gone. 
Terrible positioning and flat-footedness by the Rangers here. Just a total giveaway. Cooch ends up going in. He doesn't get all of this puck. It ends up beating Shesterkin through the five hole. Look, Kucherov's an elite scorer, so I wouldn't put him past him, even though this looks on slow motion replay like the puck rolls off his stick. You can also see the fact that he is an elite scorer that ends up tricking Shesterkin. He's looking at his glove here. He thinks that's what he's going to end up tracking. It goes through his five hole. So I'm one to believe that this is a rolled puck, but he ends up beating it. It goes in. One of the best goal scorers scores in the NHL and that is two goals now in a row where the Rangers are just truly flat footed it doesn't matter how good the Tampa Bay Lightning are and how great the Tampa Bay Lightning were skill wise in both of those goals the Rangers just gave it to them you should be able to capitalize at that point so I don't know I mean if you're a Rangers fan you don't got to feel great about this game and if you're a Bolts fan you're going hey we're the Bolts, baby. Okay, time to pick on the New York Rangers D-Zone and Adam Fox. Look, the Bolts again do great here, but let's be honest, it's the D-Zone here of the Rangers that gives this one away. So the puck is down low. So there you go, P for puck. Now what you're going to see is Mika Zibanejad. He's going to go in there and he's going to get into the hit zone. That's zone number one. You want to get in there and you want to lay the body. Zone number two is you need somebody supporting the puck. So it's Adam Fox. You need to be puck support and puck support needs to be between the man and the puck and you need to be one to two feet away from the man in the hit zone. But Fox is a defenseman and he's lost now. When defensemen aren't laying body, Zabanajad is basically playing the role of the defender at this point. Fox is playing the role of the centerman. Fox is just confused. He doesn't know where to go at this point. But I'm going to tell you, that's not really an excuse. All players need to know where they're going. Artemi Panarin makes a little bit of an accident here as well too, but he's on what's called the wall zone. So that's a W. You got the slot zone over here and you got net front over here. So, yes, you have position. Everyone is in position except for Adam Fox because you have no puck support. And that's a problem because puck support is the most important position in the D zone. So you'll see Zabanajad engages down there with Palat. That's a good puck battle. Fox just ends up continuing to go back. And now you have all of this gap here without puck support. The next thing that has to happen is Artemi Panarin has to realize, okay, I got a defenseman. I got a shoulder check. My buddy's in trouble and he needs to step down and take this spot, but he doesn't do it either. Wingers have a tendency to just hold their wing. This is why we talk in terms of F1, F2, F3, or player one, two, and three. Now you end up seeing Palat beat Zabanajad. Well, this reach in here, this isn't puck support. You're on the wrong side of the puck. You actually need to be over here between the puck and the net, but you're not. So even though Fox blows it, Panarin has an opportunity to make up for it. He doesn't. And because there's no puck support, Platt walks out and now Fox is going, okay, I guess I'm going to step up. Just the lost little puppy here at this point in time. And as Palat ends up stepping out, I mean, Fox ends up caught flat footed. And why? Because he pressures when you're supposed to be containing. So at this point in time, you can see Palat's eyes. Look, it's eyes on eyes. You shouldn't be skating forward at this point in time. What you should be doing is retreating to the house and containing. He doesn't do that. He has a little giddy up in his step there. And then you end up going through, you use him as a screen. You get a shot there on Shesterkin and you end up finding Stamkos to put that puck in the net. And why am I so hard on the Rangers there as opposed to promoting the Bolts? Because the Rangers gave it up there just due to bad D-zone. And yes, players get confused, but they have learnt the positional elements of D-zone. What I talked about there, puck support, hit zone, all of those types of things since age 12 and beyond. So these players have been doing it for anywhere from 9 to 20 years, depending on how old they are. Fox is a young man, so he's been doing it for about 10 years. He may be a defenseman, but we no longer play within our roles of lefty, right D, left wing, right wing, and center. We are all replaceable players within a unit and have to do each other's job. So they all would have been taught to cycle through those positions. Every player would know what the hit zone is and what puck support is. So the fact that Adam Fox is lost is a little bit concerning in this game. Zabanajad does his job, but Artemi Panarin doesn't step in and cover for his buddy because you know what? We got to be a team. We got to cover for each other. Panarin just holds his position kind of like not my job. I'm not sure where to go. So these are two very elite players, high paid players. And when we talk about playing properly in the D zone, take a look at Tampa Bay. They do it right every time, all the time. You don't have to be the most skilled guy, but you do have to have a lot of skill and some brain. So even though Panarin and Fox may be some of the most skilled guys here, they weren't really thinking through that D zone properly, in my opinion, and they allow Palat and Tampa Bay to exploit them because of course they're going to exploit them. They're skilled and they're veterans. 
When it comes to D-Zone, it's kind of like a diet. It's very easy conceptually. We can teach you the concepts of D-Zone as a player conceptually quite quickly, but it is the tactics that you deploy in the D-Zone and how you execute on them which are difficult and hard to do. So why do I say it's like a diet? Diets aren't easy. They're easy in the sense that less calories in, you're going to lose weight, but the actual execution of a diet is very difficult for many people. When we're talking about the D-Zone, same idea. Conceptually, it's easy, but the actual execution of the little nuances in the D zone takes in a lifetime to learn and get ready for, but I would expect better from a defenseman. Defensemen usually understand the D zone better than the offense and offensive players bleh, end up doing it. So the fact that Fox was lost playing the center role doesn't really make much sense to me because there's a lot of times in the NHL where the center ends up in the hit zone and the defenseman ends up as puck support and vice versa. Either way, as you can tell, D-Zone is kind of my forte. That is what I lived and breathed on as a hockey coach and as a player. So if you dedicate yourself to the D-Zone, you're going to end up generating great offense because great defense always leads to great offense. I think Adam Fox is a much better defenseman than what he was showing in that play. But hey, even the best get caught at times, and they are heading home in front of that crazy crowd at Madison Square Garden. So hopefully that ends up flipping the game for them. Look, Bolts fans, Ranger fans, thanks for being here. This has been an absolute fantastic treat. Remember to subscribe. And if you haven't commented yet, comment down below. Even drop your favorite emoji if you need to. Coach Ryan D is going to catch you in the next one.